Hello, I'm Nick. Today I will show you how to generate web and mobile UI design using Google Stitch. It will be fun. We can use this tool during the different stages of product design process. During the early stage of design process, when we only have a general idea of what we want to build. And in the later stages of design process, when we have a clear idea of what we are building. Suppose I'm just started to work on a new investment app. And I want to explore different options for app design. So I will write a prompt. Home screen of investment app. And it will be a mobile app. Stitch analyzes my prompt and decides to use green color scheme for my design. Green is a color of money. We got this design, which looks like an average investment app. It looks fine for initial exploration, but nothing really special. This design is not interactive. And despite that I asked the tool to generate a home screen, for some reason the tool highlights the portfolio tab. Let's quickly change the visual style of the screen. To do that, I will click on the theme icon. And I can change visual attributes of the design, such as color scheme, corner radius, fonts, and even visual appearance. Let's change the color to blue, set corner radius to more squarish, and select light appearance. I think the blue color looks nice on the light background. Let's change the content of the screen by adding a new section. I will ask the tool to add a featured asset and explicitly mention that I want to see it below the account summary. Submit this prompt and wait for a tool to introduce the change. The tool understood us and added a new section. Since our design is very minimalist, the section doesn't have any distinct visual attributes and it blends with the rest of design. Now let's create another example. And to do that, I will open Stitch in a new tab. For the second example, I will use a very detailed prompt and give AI clear instructions on what I want to see. I use a specific format for my prompt to help AI generate practical, usable and nicely composed UI. The prompt has five sections. Context. I start with a clear one-liner that defines what I'm designing. This helps AI to understand the purpose and the scope of the screen before diving into visuals. Then I move to description. Explain what matters most. User goals, content priorities, and interaction details. This ensures that AI focuses on function, not just aesthetics. Then platform. Specify the device and operating system to help align with the platform guidelines and constraints like screen size, layout behavior, and native components. Next comes visual style. It defines the tone and feel of my design, how it should look like and be perceived by end user. I also try to add accessibility needs, like contrast and readability, and style directions, such as use subtle gradients in this example. Finally, UI components to include. I break down what I need to have on this screen. When drafting this section, focus on the page structure, header, body, footer, and storytelling. What the user should see first, second, third, what actions they should take. Support your design with a placeholder copy, so AI gets the context and tone right. Let's copy and paste the prompt to the input field. Double check that we didn't miss anything and submit it. What I don't really like about Stitch is that it breaks the formatting of the prompt. Instead of the nice formatting for our prompt that we provided, our prompt now looks like this. I think this makes it harder to scan the prompts, especially if you are doing multiple iterations with AI Assistant. The tool again uses a green color scheme. And we can already see that AI didn't follow our instructions precisely. For example, the tool shows the greeting at the top, but the text says Hi Liam and not Welcome back Sarah. Not a big deal, but something to consider when working with this tool. As for UI, again, it's nothing really special. Industry standard. What I don't really like is that this design doesn't highlight important content. When you scroll the screen, your eyes won't be attracted to a particular content. Now it's time to mention one important feature that Stitch offers. Export to Figma. When we click Figma, Stitch will create a copy of this design. We can jump to Figma and paste our design onto the canvas. And the nice thing about this design is that it has an auto layout. All sections are created with auto layout. While in general this design is ok, there are some things that bother me, and one is nesting elements. For example, an icon in the tab bar is at a level 5 depth. 
This makes this design a bit more complex in terms of hierarchy of elements than it should be. Now let's jump back to Stitch and write a follow-up prompt. Let's see how good the tool is at creating consistent design. I don't want to provide very detailed instruction this time. Let's see what we will get. The search screen looks fine. It was created using the visual and functional style of a home screen. Stitch uses relevant categories for the investment tab. But the bottom tab bar doesn't look right. It uses icons with labels and wrong options. Let's fix it. Type a follow-up prompt. Update the bottom tab bar, referencing the previously generated design. Now we don't have labels, which is good, but the navigation options are still incorrect. To fix this, we can either submit another follow-up prompt or copy and paste this design to Figma and fix it there. I will follow the second approach. When copying design from Stitch to Figma, the tool sometimes introduces minor issues. Such as in this case, you can see that the placeholder text is not aligned properly. Many times, we can easily fix such issues with one or two clicks. At this point, we have two screens for our app, and with minor tweaks, they will work fine for our task. Let's return to the Stitch. Navigate back to the home screen design and open another instance of Stitch in the Browser tab. This time I will generate a web page. Switch to Web and type Design a landing page that promotes an investment app for iOS. Again, a green color scheme is used for our design. Green means growth. And once again, the design that Stitch generates is very generic. It looks ok, but it's not something I personally would use. Let's submit a follow-up prompt, asking the tool to change the style to minimalist. Ask to include abstract illustrations in Kandinsky style. Stitch starts to work on our request. And for some reason, it updates the visual theme from green to blue. I didn't ask to do it. The image in here section is indeed in Kandinsky style. But the rest of design is pretty much the same, which is sad. Let's change the color to green since green is the primary color of our app and we want to make our web design look consistent with mobile app design. Quite interesting is that Stitch offers light green and not dark green. But this is, I believe, is because this is a new project for Stitch. Copy Figma Ready Design and paste it onto the Figma canvas. Just like a design for mobile, a design for web also has an outer layout. And we can quickly change the visual style of elements like buttons. Select object and change its color. Sadly, we don't have variables in design generated by Stitch. It means that we need to change the color values one by one. Quite funny, the design has a copyright dated to 2024, and I'm recording this in 2025. But nevertheless, we have two designs, mobile app and web page for our product, that we created in less than 10 minutes. Jump back to Stitch and we can visually compare our designs side by side. This is a benefit of keeping designs in separate tabs in a browser. And I will let you decide whether designs generated by this AI tool is good enough to replace designs created by human designers or not. That was my experience using Google Stitch for UI design. Have you used AI tools in your design process? Please share your experience in the comments. Thank you.